I have all the parts that are going to go into your airplane laid out right here in front of me. Uh, well, I don't have a propeller. Now, why don't I have a propeller? Because that's darn dangerous. If I put a propeller on this thing while I'm sitting here with it, without it anchored down to an airplane and, and laying on my table, uh, I could have, that's invitation for a big disaster and a lot of ouchies on your arms and your fingers and anything else in there. So all your testing, when you're doing testing and so forth, and I strongly encourage you when you get all these parts is to lay it out just like I've done here and plug it all together and play with it. Get familiar with it. Get familiar with how it works and so forth, but do not put a propeller on there. Do, that's just like putting a razor blade in the hands of a five-year-old. Don't do it. So let's start connecting things up. Uh, let's, you can pretend there's a propeller attached to this folder hub, but there's really not, okay? Uh, let's connect up the, the ESC to the motor. Now, I got three wires, three connectors. Uh-oh, what goes where? I have no idea. We're not going to know which goes where until we try it. So I'm just going to plug any three wires into any three connectors. All right. Now the ESC is connected to the motor. All right. Now the ESC is connected to the motor, or the motor is connected to the ESC. Now let's connect our servo. I told you the servo goes on the bottom row of pins, and we just take this connector, we just slide it right on, and that's it. Okay, all right, servo's connected. Now let's connect our, our speed controller to, or to, the, to the timer. Once again, here's the connector, and I happen to know, I, don't, I didn't have to look, but here's the black, the red, the white, and I know which order they go in on the timer, and there we are. All right, now that's all connected. The last thing to connect up is the battery connects to the ESC. And this, I told you this was a Dean's Micro 2-pin polarized. And this is the polarization. On each connector, oh, there's only one pin that sticks out. On the battery, it's the positive pin. And on, 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 the, on the, this side, the pin, what sticks out is, is the negative pin. So there's only one way this can go together, and that's like this. Now, um, it's important... When I said the positive pin sticks out, let me unplug it here. The positive pin sticks out on the battery. That is the industry standard convention for this style of connector. That's the way the manufacturer says to do it on their package when you buy it. And you must follow that because if you're out of the flying field and you've got this connector but you've connected it backwards and you borrow it from somebody, uh, you're going to have a big time problem on your hands. So it's very important that you follow that convention on the battery. It's the positive pin that sticks out. All right, now I'm going to connect it up together again. All right, now let's notice something. This LED is going to flash every 10 seconds. Okay, now why, why is it flashing every 10 seconds? That's just to tell you that everything is connected and that it's ready to be used. It also helps remind you that, that you have the battery connected because we don't want to leave the batteries connected if we're not flying. So that's just a reminder. All right, now I push it once and release and notice the rapid flash. This is telling me that the timer is now armed and is ready to go. The motor's not running, everything is still safe. If I push it quickly, nothing happens. I must push it and hold it in for at least two seconds and suddenly this motor is going to start spinning. Now, I have everything set here for the shortest runs. I've got the motor set for, not, for not, not, nothing more than three seconds of run, running time. Uh, that would be like for a test flight. And I have the DT servo set for 1.3 seconds to trip the DT after the motor stops. So just you can and you will can see the movements here uh, when the, when the motor stops or when the motor starts after I release this pin or release this button, the motor's going to run for three seconds. It will stop. 
Then 1.3 seconds later, you're going to see this rotate. So let's go. Hold it in. There we go. All right, now I'm going to release it. Now we're flying. We're up in the air. There, stop. There. All right, that released, just released the DT. Okay, now uh, you'll notice that everything has come back to, to rest. The servo automatically returned to its, its resting position. Uh, and the timer now is, is in, once again, the slow flash. Once every 10 seconds, just to tell you that everything is still connected. Now let me show you a feature here. I told you about how to stop the motor if you decide you don't want to fly. So let's go. Now it's flashing fast. It's armed. Hold it in. So, see, you see how it stopped quickly? I just tapped the button and it stopped immediately. Let me do it again. Okay, it's flashing. That means it's armed. Hold it in for two seconds. There it goes. Now, stop. That's a safety feature or a feature that if you decide you don't want to fly right now, that's just a way of doing of, of, of killing everything without having to reset or, re, or make any other adjustments. Everything has gone back to the, where it was before. So it's a very convenient factor. Uh, and I will not connect up the, the, the uh, RDT until we get to the airplane. And then when we're in the airplane, is that's when I'm going to show you how the RDT works. Uh, let me just point out one other thing here. So I have this off to the side. This is another servo. You know, I told you the servos come or not servos. Uh, ESC. This is another ESC brand. You know, it, it's fine. It, it's it happens to be the same rating, 12 amp here hours, uh, or 12 amp rating, uh, but it's it's a different physical size, has some different wires on it, uh, but it does exactly the same thing. Once again, three wires. Now, uh, I mentioned that we have the three wires here and we don't know which wire goes where. Uh, and we know that we want the motor to rotate in the, I'm thinking about it, counterclockwise direction. The propeller should rotate in the counterclockwise direction for our airplanes. Let's see if we can tell what direction this is rotating in to see if this one is right. And, we'll, and I'll show you what to do if it's not right. So once again, we arm it. And now let's see if we can tell which direction it's going. I couldn't tell, I could not tell what direction it was going. But let's say it was going in the wrong direction, uh, which in 50% of the time it's going to be wrong. How do we reverse it? Do we have to start all over again? Of course not. All we do is reverse any two wires, any two of the three wires. Put this one up here and this one down here. And now this motor is going to go in the opposite direction. That's all there is to it. Now, once you've made this adjustment on your airplane, you're never going to have to worry about it again unless you put another ESC on there. But that's, that's the way it works. Very simple. Ah, I, 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 I saw it. it was going this way. Now, that happens to be the correct direction. So it was running backwards. I, I, I managed to see it this last time. And, and, and it was this time it was going in this direction, which is the way it should go. So we did make the, we made the, the correction correctly. <laughs> okay, now the next part, the next video we make, will show you what happens when we put all this stuff in an airplane so you can see all, all the DT and everything else work together. Okay.